Hi, this is Melanie for the Pardaisy channel. I'm here to do a review of the Mohanlal exquisite film Vana Prastam. <music> Vana Prastam is given the English tagline The Last Dance, which is not a not even a close translation of what the word means, what the title word means. This is a really interesting film because it's a co-production, uh, French and Malayalam film. The film is two hours long. It's more Hollywood length standard. It premiered at Cannes. It premiered in the Un Certain Regard section of the Cannes Film Festival in France. Shaji Karun is the director, and he had had success with a previous film at the Cannes Film Festival. The film is a masterpiece of Mohanlal subtleties of acting. It is an absolutely incredible performance. It's very much an art film. It's very, it's, it's grounded and this performance is in the same way that most Malayalam films are, but it's just of another level that reminds me of a European kind of uh, feel to the film. Even though it's so grounded the story in things that are specific to Kerala, specifically what Mohanlal's character is, and that's a Katakali dancer. I, you know, have seen the Katakali dancers in other films with the green makeup on the face and the white uh, beard and been so curious about them. And this is the first film where I'd ever really seen a more authentic, not just, you know, like part of Chennai Express or something like that, a, a true Katakali dance and performance and what it's all about with these stories with Arjuna and the, the demon makeup. And so I dived a little bit into research on what the different makeup meant and learning about how each character has, each kind of character has a different kind of makeup. It's so much of not just the dancing itself, but different expressions telling the story. It was such a window into that world and also what kind of in Indian actors in general sort of have in their toolbox, which is just a raised eyebrow or whatever, just really subtle facial movements, control of their face, control of their body in a different way than I think Western actors have. And, and that kind of, I said, oh, it's, it's grounded even in the dance. You know, so much of it about Indian dance's expression, you know, and the way your eyes look and so forth in a dance, but this is an, a completely level beyond. <laughs> so just taking a, a loan Mohanlal's performances in the makeup at during the plays and the shown on screen, amazing. <laughs> But the story itself is so interesting. Here he is. He's a lower caste. We see a flashback to him as a child and where you, we surmise that he is a bastard son of the landlord. Unacknowledged, and but allowed to learn dance, which means that he you know, gets some extra meals a day by the dance master. I wasn't completely clear to me exactly how he got married as a young man. But then the marriage was not a happy one. And the only thing that brings him true joy is his daughter. And I also thought it was interesting how they showed how he was such a respected artist that people would come from far away to have him dance at their festivals. But yet he lived this life of poverty. His wife was constantly complaining about money matters. And he wanted to live the life of an artist. There's, I mean, there's a famous scene where he performs for royalty and, and talks about his poverty or talks about someone who's ill and can't, you know, it was just like, oh, that's too bad. You know, here's this man who has the power of largesse, power to really fund artists and doesn't, you know. He wanted to, to perform at those set occasions, 
but otherwise they're just disposable people. So I thought that was really interesting showing, showing this dark side of, of an artist's life. And I mean, I think that could be at any time, not just Kerala from all those decades ago. This princess or member of the royal family, Subhadra, sees his performance and is completely captivated. And what I didn't know when I first watched this, but it's played by Suhasini, who is Mani Ratnam's wife. She was amazing. I mean, literally, I didn't, she was sort of in this... Um, we, we see her view as she's looking through sort of a peekaboo window, like she's a cloistered. And she can only even see one of his performances through a small window in this enclosed viewing box. We see kind of this hand poking out of the window. And she's so affected by his performance. She wants to meet him. She, she's a poet. She wants to, to write the story of her namesake and Arjuna. She wants Mohan Lal's character to play it. She just sort of has this dreamy kind of look in her eyes. And as the film goes on, you can kind of guess, okay, this this woman is a little off. And we don't know exactly, is it because... we? I, that was one thing that I left was left wanting with, is that the because the film was only two hours, I wanted more of her situation. The film is really completely, almost completely from Mohan Lal's point of view. And I wanted a little bit more about her situation. She's married, but her husband is absent most of the time. And she she seems to be very stiff. She's living a, a life of intellectualism and books and seeing plays and whatever. But she lives a very sheltered, cloisters life. She doesn't have much freedom. So is it that lack of freedom that led to her being a little off? Or is that just something with her character? I would have liked a little bit more interaction of her with other family members or something to kind of give a little bit more depth to her story because I was left so curious about her character. Mohanlal, this film is so melancholy. He's an alcoholic. He's never recognized by his father. There's a confusing section in the middle where he's has a has an emotional scene with a bedridden man. And I thought that was his father, but in the end I think it was his dance master. It was very confusing. And there's someone else that he wants to go make a pilgrimage and and do the funeral rites for and he's not allowed and I'm not sure if that was for his father or for that was for the dance visitor. to me that part was a little bit confusing and I don't know if it was the subtitles or just my confusion on on what what exactly I was saying but anyway Mohan Law is torn up by the fact that he doesn't have a relationship with a father that he's never been acknowledged by his father you know and he doesn't have a good relationship with his wife and he suddenly has this what he feels is like this art both an intellectual and artistic connection with this woman this beautiful woman and they do have an affair and and it's just such an iconic scene of the morning after of her his green makeup smeared all over her face there's so many iconic moments like that in the film that i will never forget so it's, I, it's not clear whether it's just one night or a short affair or what. She only really sees him as the character, Arjuna, and she can't really deal with the real, the fact that she had an, affa an affair with this lower caste actual person who is a dancer. She just, she can't really, she's not in the realm of reality. But when she becomes pregnant with his son, she never allows him to see his son for his for the rest of his life and he tries over and over and over again and so he is so torn up by this he goes to an extreme measure which you've never seen the film the final moments i mean he as he's filled with rage over his life he switches he vows never to be arjuna again and he's plays the demon characters and another one of these kind of moments that i will never forget is him just ex the rage that he can't express at home over this whole situation with her he 
pours out in his performances and it's these screams of rage as this these demon characters <laughs> Ever, ever forget those a couple of those scenes like that he finally allows his daughter to join him in dance and then there's a final performance that again is just an incredible so the film just it's very different than other Mohan Law films there's not there's subtlety of acting there's just a an excellence of craft in Mohan Law and I read a quote from the cinematographer who worked in German and French European films, Renato Berta, who said he had never seen another performer be able to go from just joking around with all of the people on a set and then action and he could just immediately go into these melancholy into these performances, these exceptional performances. He'd never seen any other actor be so natural to go into character at the way that Mohan Law can do it. So, I mean, we know that Mohan Law is great, but it's interesting someone who had worked in Western cinema, working with Mohan Law and just being amazed. And this is a film where he's really showing his stuff. I don't know if this is a film that I would call a favorite. Deborah Serum is still my favorite Mohan Lal performance. It's one that I would find difficult to watch the entire film over again because it's so, so melancholy in tone. But individual scenes of him doing the Katakali performances especially, those I would like to see again just to see the craft and all that he puts into it it's like you can tell that there's set expressions that he's supposed to do and you're just seeing even beyond that a depth of feeling a depth of acting and he's matched with Suhasini being such a good actress too and her part really good person to play off of it's a film that's I think is going to stay with me for a long time I've seen that it's listed as being in the top 10 of Indian cinema of all time it is an exceptional film. So I'm glad I bought it on DVD so that I have it for myself to keep. And I'm really glad because it was hard to, hard to find. So I was like, fine, I'm just going to buy it. I'm glad that I did because it's one, if you are a Mohan Lal fan, it's a performance that you need to see. You need to see. He won Best Actor and, and it wasn't an easy year because he was up against Kamal Hassan and... Hey Ram, it was a difficult year. This film won national film awards. It went to several film festivals and won honors around the world, justifiably so. It's one of those interesting films that I can see what a good crossover film it was for the film festival kind of market. And it's absolutely criminal that this one wasn't put up for the Oscars that year. This is the perfect kind of film that could have broken through in the Oscars because even though it's about something so specific to Kerala it's talking about art it's talking about being an artist it's talking about the pain of being an artist and it just has such universal appeal that I think it would have broken through and it's just really a shame I don't know what the heck goes on with the committee that picks the films for the Oscars because this is one that should have been nominated for the foreign language film I absolutely loved this film and thank you to everyone who urged me to make sure that I see it. So many more Mohan Lal classic films to get to see, but this was one you said, if you liked the dance in Devasuram, you need, I, you need to see this one. You are right because this is an incredible performance by Mohan Lal. If you like this review, please like and share it. If you have any comments about what this film meant to you. I'd love to hear about them in the comments below. Please do follow me on Twitter at PardaisyYT. Subscribe to the Pardaisy channel and if you hit the bell then you'll get a notification whenever I have a new film review or trailer reaction. And also I've started a new podcast called the Pardaisy Podcast. You can find it on iTunes and Google Play and so forth and Podbean. 
and I will be posting all my film reviews there and I have some fun longer conversations with friends so please do check that out link in the description below